What's up guys? I'm Travis and you're watching Upgraded RC. Guys, it is great to be back. For those of you who've been following me, you know I've been building a house. Uh, in my last video I told everybody it'd take about six, seven months. Well, it took nine months. Ironically, my last video was nine months ago. I didn't really have any place to make any videos, so we're back at it again. Um, I ran the hell out of my car while I was stuck in my camper trailer, and uh, I neglected it pretty bad. I didn't get a chance to do very much to it. Uh, my body is tore up really bad here, even with repairs that I got. I got holes going through it. And busted the wing off for the third or fourth time. You can see how bad my uh, my play in my axle carrier, my steering knuckle is here. Look at how far the tire is off the back. We're going to go ahead and take care of all this stuff. we got the season coming up. I'm ready to go. I'm building a track out there. Um, I've got some requests from you guys for shock stuff. I've had several of them in the past. I'm sorry I couldn't get to them. I was too busy. I had no place to do this. But now that we are done with the house and everything, we're going to start on the shocks today. And i got a whole bunch of other stuff here I want to show you guys. And we're going to get going on some new videos too. Stay tuned. All right, guys. One more thing before we get started here. I showed you that pile of parts back there and told you guys I'd be fixing my car back up to normal and replacing all the neglect and abuse I've done to it. Well, here you go. This is what we're going to be doing in the future, just so you know. I'll have a couple of videos out there. But we're going to be replacing our control arms. I believe they're all stripped out. Um, I do have a new MIP metal drive shaft we'll be installing and testing and talking about. Uh, here are the steering knuckles or the axle carriers that I told you guys had so much play in them. Um, I don't believe they're rebuildable no more. I've done it several times. I think they're finally destroyed. So we'll replace that. We've got the, the parts that go with them here. Um, let me see. Here's all of the bearings for pretty much the entire car. I'm not sure how much of it I'm going to replace yet. We got some drive cups because those things wear out constantly. Here's some more rod ends. Uh, I think mine are starting to get a little bit worn out, so we're going to replace some of those. Um, let me see here. Oh, here's the uh, new body, so you guys don't have to look at my old body no more. We got a new body. We got a new wing that I've blown up three or four times. Oh, look, there's a brand new Traxxas T-shirt. Hell yeah! And then we're coming down here. Here's our here's our rebuild kit for the shocks. We're going to be doing those today and some springs. I'll be explaining that. And here are the progressive rockers. Um, this is stage three, which I'll be explaining as well. It's all part of the suspension coming up. Here we go, guys. Now, I think it goes without saying, guys, that suspension is a vital key to getting the maximum amount of performance out of your car. So let's face it, you can have a large motor with lots of horsepower, lots of torque. If you can't keep your tires on the ground for when you want to turn, or when you're going through that whoop section, or down that rocky road, or maybe you're jumping this major sand dune, and you don't want to bottom out or ruin your car, suspension is the key. Suspension is how we get our horsepower to the ground. So guys, one of the really cool things about the Evo 2.0 is it uses an inboard dampener arrangement, which is the same thing any car uses. What I mean is instead of having the vertical shocks that go up and down with the vertical motion of the tire, you have an inboard suspension system here that's linear. And these pivoting rockers right here are what translate it. They translate the vertical movement of your tire going up and down through the rocker into a linear motion that compresses your suspension based on how much travel and compression is being applied to it. This is really a cool system. You can change these progressive rockers out to different rates so they can be more progressive or less progressive. What I mean is if you have a constant rate on your suspension, the amount of travel that you're putting to your tire is going to be constant to the amount of compression or travel that you're putting on your shock. So it's going to be the same. On a progressive rocker like this one, you can change it so that it starts out really smooth on the, the travel that you're putting on your tire is going to put very little travel on the spring, on the compression. As it goes further into its motion, it's going to put more compression on the spring. So this is really good in controlling your vehicle uh, on, on smaller bumps all the way up to bigger jumps. It depends on what you have it set up for, but I'm going to explain all that to you. And there are three progressive rates from Traxxas 
that you can put on here to adjust this how you want it. There's lots more from other places. All right, let's move on. So in this video, I'm going to explain the complete entire suspension system to you. How it works, how it's adjusted, how to get the most performance out of your vehicle. Now, most people think the shocks are your suspension system. While this is a great part of it, it is not all of it. There are several different components that go into the suspension system. And each component has its own function. And to be able to get the most performance out of your car, you need to know what those are, what they do, and how to adjust them. I'm going to help you with that today. Now, if you're not interested in this and you just wanted to see what shock oil I'm using or the different piston rates or spring rates, you can go ahead and skip ahead. But if you guys are interested in tuning your car to maximum performance and getting the most out of your suspension, it's necessary that you watch the rest of this part. It's uh, explained in great detail and you're going to understand all of it. Uh, now, every driver is different, every train is different, um, people are trying to do different things, so I can't dial them perfect for you, but I can sure help you out with understanding what each component does and adjusting it to get the best you can get out of your car. The best way for me to show you guys how the suspension works is to physically just show you. Okay, I want you to remember that travel equals compression. Okay, as your tire travels, it's going to compress your shocks. This is how it works. Let's say you're coming off of a jump. What's the first thing that's going to hit the ground? It's going to be your tire, right? So your tire is going to compress first, and this is connected to your steering knuckle or your bearing carrier, which is connected to the control arms here. So as your tire goes up, the control arms pivot and go up. Your push rod goes up as well. And when your push rod goes up, it's putting pressure on your pivoting progressive rocker here, which puts pressure on the shock. So as your tire travels up, it goes through the whole motion of linkage, everything linked together, and you have compression on your shock. This, is, this compresses the spring, it compresses the oil, and it compresses the piston inside. This is what gives you your suspension based on how you have it adjusted. Now, something that's not on the list at all that I'd like to talk about, different tires, um, say the stock tires for the Euro 2.0, or like these are the Duratrax six packs, they've got big sponges inside. Okay, these are great tires for jumping because the first thing that hits is your tire, so it compresses the sponge and the rubber on the tire before it ever even actuates any of your suspension at all. So I believe it gives you just a little bit more travel and it takes a little bit of stress off of your suspension. Now if you have the steel belted tires with no sponges and there's a lot less ride area between that and the wheel, you're going to compress your shocks first, or sooner, I'm sorry, and you're going to have just a little bit, you still have the same amount of travel, but you don't have any of the compression on your tires, so it's gonna hit first, and it's gonna be a little bit more violent because your tires take up some of the travel, so to speak, if that makes any sense. So let's talk about the different components you've got in the suspension system that go into creating this action that we've just seen. Um, first and foremost, uh, it goes without saying, is your tire. We're just talking about your tire. Um, so you got your tires, and then you go to uh, your ride height adjustment. You've got your roll center adjustment. Um, we have different spring rates that are available to us, uh, which you can adjust your preload and sag on each one of those with the adjustment nut. Um, we have different shock oils, okay? Different weights of oils do different things for the rebound damage as well as the pistons that we have inside the shocks that also help with the rebound dampening or actually create the rebound dampening. Um, and then we've got our progressive rockers here, the pivoting rockers we talked about, and also your bump stops. All these things going to creating your suspension system. So we're gonna talk about them. Let's we'll start with ride height. Okay guys, so your ride height can be adjusted by Determining which one of these three holes here that you put your push rod into there. Let me zoom in a little bit and show you Here you go now on the bottom of each one of your control arms You have three different positions where you can put your push rod the stock position is in the center Traxxas figures that gives you the best of both worlds uh, Either direction. It's a nice safe place to start now if you go to the lower hole here What this is going to do is it's going to bring a lower center of gravity to the car. So say you're doing the stadium type races where the jumps aren't very big and you don't really have too many bumps, it's basically flat tracking around really fast. The lower position will be better for you because 
it's going to keep your car closer to the ground so when you're going around them corners really hauling ass you're not going to flip over as easily as if you were at a higher ride height uh, number two it's going to let your tires dig in a little bit better because you're closer to the dirt it's going to give you a little bit more traction so that is the lower position and if you bump all the way up to the upper position here let me uh let me zoom out here i actually got I got the piece of the control arm out of the bag. I can show you guys in the brand new one. So here's your three holes we were talking about, a nice clean piece. But if you go to the upper position, the upper hole, which is where I've got mine right now, closest to center, what that's going to do is give you the ability to jump bigger jumps, um, go over bigger bumps, and you've got a little bit more ground clearance. That's the pros. Now the cons to that is obviously you're a little bit higher, so when you're in them corners trying to really take a hard corner, it's going to flip a little bit easier than if it was lower center of gravity. And also your tires will probably spin out a little bit more and not get as much traction because you're a little bit higher. Now, I'd like to point out that you can change the ride height to any position you want to at any time. There is uh, no time when you cannot do it. It does not affect the rest of the suspension system. So you can make changes to your adjustment to your suspension in any way you want to, and then change the height, right height whenever you want to. It's not going to change anything on the adjustments of the suspension. You can also finely tune your ride height by the adjustment nut here on your spring. So you can turn this up and down until it you get the fine-tuned ride height that you really want. Now, I wouldn't recommend going very far with this nut. If you go too far on this, you're going to cause damage and your car is just not going to work as good. So if you run out of adjustment here and you're on your max ride height, the next step is to go to a bigger spring. Okay, if the bigger spring doesn't take care of it, your next step is to go to thicker weight oil. So that's ride height, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about the roll center. So guys, roll center is basically roll resistance. On your bulkhead, front and rear, there's two holes on the top. Now this is where you connect your upper control arms with that long pin. From the factory position, they put the long pin in the top hole, okay? It's a little bit less uh, dive, a little bit less uh, roll traction in the corners. Um, they do that to make it more forgiving for a driver, maybe a little more user friendly. If you drop these pins down to the lower hole on, say, the rear control arms, what that's going to do is it's going to add more traction to the front. It's going to be less roll resistance and greater steering gain, more control of your steering. If you lower the pins on the front, it's going to add greater roll resistance to the rear. Now, if you take and lower your pins all the way around, what it's going to do is it's going to give you a little bit bigger ride height, and add overall roll resistance to everything. It's just like adding an anti-sway bar to your vehicle. So in the corners, you're gonna be able to hit them just a little bit harder, um, and you've got just a little bit greater ride height. So that's achieved, like I said, by just removing the pin from the bulkhead, taking it out of the upper position, putting it into the lower position. Now, if you do this, Traxxas is recommending that you reposition your toe link in. On your front steering so I don't know they're they're saying that the, these hollow balls and shims come with your vehicle that provided with it I didn't get any I don't know about you guys but I'm just taking and adjusting them out to where I need to have them and it seems to work pretty good for me now keep in mind that when you do this this is also going to change your caster rates on the front of your steering okay so those will have to be readjusted That's about it for roll center, guys. Now, spring rates. Spring rates are basically exactly what it sounds like. There are different springs that have different rates. This is based on the thickness of the coil. So the thicker the coil on the spring, the more resistance it's going to give. So this one here doesn't have as much as this one. This one's a little bit thicker. I can definitely tell the difference and so on and so on, it keeps going up. So there's two marks on every spring right here at the top. Like this one's got two gold marks. This one's got two gray marks. This one here, this one's got two purple marks. Each one of these painted colors represents a different spring rate. Let me show you in the book. So this is the spring rate chart 
in your Traxxas manual. Now here's what I was talking about. See how it shows all the different colors here and corresponding beside them it's showing your spring rate. Like this yellow one right here, it's 14.8 inch pounds. Okay, that's the amount of compression you're going to get out of that spring. As you work your way down through the white and the orange and the green and the gold, the gold right here, now this is the standard for the front. This is what your Traxxas comes stock with in the front, 21.7 inch pounds. And then you can see here's the tan colored one. It looks more like gray to me, to be honest with you, but the standard for the rear is the tan and it's showing 23.4 inch pounds. Now that's a 10% difference between the front and the rear. That's the way Traxxas has set it up for you so you'd have a little bit more or a little bit less compression in the front so your steering is a little bit nicer, I guess. Um, this is basically however you want to set it up. Right now I've got two of the purple springs on mine, front and rear. Um, I think it's great and you notice the black is the, the best one they're showing here at 25. 0.1 inch pounds okay and that's also on the other side is also metric guys 6.4 right here um, I'd like to show you the only one they don't have on there is this one this is the purple one I was showing you guys about it doesn't have it on there I guess it was too new for it but you can actually see right here what they're listing is 6.4 they're listing it in metric but 6.4 is definitely greater than the 4.4 we've got right here on the black. So the purple ones are definitely the ones with the most compression. They're the stiffest ones you have. Probably going to be your best option if you really like uh, sky in and out of jumps. So there's a lot of different springs out there with different spring rates. You can get them from Traxxas or from other manufacturers. Basically you're going to want to increase your, your spring rate if you are jumping and bottoming out, so you decide you want to make them a little bit stiffer. Um, also, if you cannot achieve the correct ride height after you've done everything else we've talked about and you've adjusted your preload and sag, then you're going to want to go up a size in spring. Um, but that's basically uh, the nutshell of it, is if you need your suspension to be a little bit stiffer on the compression side, the spring is what's going to take care of it. Well, next on my list, guys, is shock oil. Now, shock oil is made by many different manufacturers, and it comes in many different weights. It depends on what you're trying to do. So shock oil controls the dampening effect on the suspension system. By managing the movement of the tire after it lands off of a jump or a bump, continuing to bounce, it dampens this so that it doesn't continue to bounce, giving you greater control. Now, if you increase the weight of your oil, you're going to increase your dampening. If you decrease the weight of your oil, you're going to decrease the dampening. Now, you might need to increase the weight of your oil or your dampening if you're coming off of jumps or bumps and your tires are continuing to bounce. Uh, you're going to want to increase that, or if it won't take the full blow of the jump and it bottoms out easily, you're going to want to go ahead and increase your weight of your oil. You'll want to decrease the weight of your oil if you're in a circumstance where your car is uncontrollable over small bumps and it's bouncing all over the place, maybe you went ahead and added too much dampening. Now you need to take some away with go with a lesser weight oil. Um, by the way, the stock position from the factory for Traxxas is 40 weight and they're using 100% silicone based oil. I do recommend you continue to use 100% silicone based oil uh, depending on where you get it from and what your weights are. It, it's 100% uh, silicone based oil is definitely going to save your seals and your pistons and, and everything. It's just, uh, it's meant for it. So that's what I would recommend. Now there's a kicker to this guys. In the winter time, the shock oil weights are going to change by themselves. So if you're in a place that's really cold, you're not going to want to have 80 or 100 weight oil. Uh, especially if you're jumping and stuff like that because when you come down off the jumps, your oil is so thick now that it can blow the shock cap off. You could ruin your threads. Um, if you're running a, a very lightweight oil in the winter time, it's actually due to the cold, it, it's making it a lot thicker. So keep that in mind uh, where you live and the temperatures that you have outside currently while you're running. You don't ever want too thick of an oil in the cold. Uh, most people were running between 40 and 60 in the cold. Uh, 70, 80, 90, 100 in the summer, depending on what you're doing. But just keep that in mind, you don't want to blow your, your shot caps off your threads. All right, guys, moving right along here into the piston part. 
Now these pistons are found inside of your shock body and basically they have two holes drilled in them that lets your shock oil flow through those holes. So each one of these here, and they're very difficult to see, I'll try to show you on the chart or something a little bit better, but each one of these is numbered one, two, or three. Now this dictates the size of the hole that are drilled in each one of these. Each one has two holes, but the holes in number one are quite a bit bigger than the holes in number three. So this is going to greatly affect your dampening. You can take and add the number one piston to it, which is going to flow more shock oil, which is going to give you less dampening. Or you can go to number three, which has a smaller hole, it's going to flow less oil and it's going to add more dampening. Um, this is all kind of a, of a puzzle, guys, a Rubik's Cube. All the stuff we've been talking about kind of intertwines with each other. You can see how the shock oil and the shock pistons are directly related to each other. Um, it's just a little bit of fine tuning on each one to get what you want. It's, it's really a puzzle, but when you get it figured out, it works great. And by the way here, um, here is the rebuild kit for the shocks. Um, I just want you guys to know that it does come with two of each one of these. Two ones, two twos, and two threes. So you can go ahead and pick the one that you want. Now Traxxas says you don't really need to change this out unless you only have one weight of oil or the oil you're using is not meeting your needs. Well, I disagree a little bit. I understand that they do the same thing. Thicker oil is more dampening and on the piston the smaller holes is more dampening but if you mix them up a little bit this and that um, you're going to get different results and by the way from the factory stat Traxxas is in the number two position it has number two on the piston let me show you the chart here this Traxxas has got it might help explain it a little bit better so here's the chart from Traxxas this will uh, maybe explain it a little bit better guys. It shows right here on this piston marked number one and you can see the two holes I'm talking about here on the outside. Well these are at 1.10 millimeters. Okay that's the size of these holes on the side. As you go down number two it gets smaller. There's 1.0. This is the stock one it comes with is number two. And then here's number three and it goes all the way down to 0.95 of a millimeter not even a whole millimeter. So you can see how the larger holes are going to flow more oil and give you less dampening and the smaller holes are going to flow less oil and give you more damp. So your progressive pivoting rocker here is what connects the push rod to the suspension. Now this is a very important tool because it's also available in different progressive rates. Okay so Traxxas offers these rockers here in three different progressive rates. A number one, number two, and number three. A three being the highest progressive rate and one being the lowest progressive rate. By the way, your stock out of the box Traxxas Erevo 2.0 comes stock with number two. Now you might want to go to number one rocker. That's going to provide a lower progressive rate that maintains constant dampening force across and throughout the whole range of the suspension travel. Okay, now this is best for when you have extremely rough terrain and it requires maximum suspension articulation. Maybe you want to go to progressive rate number three and you would do this to improve high speed cornering on smooth surfaces. Um, it also can provide a better, firmer feel for the body roll and it's going to have less brake dive and the rear end will also squat less. So one thing you should know guys, if you do use the lower progressive rate, if you go with number one, you're probably going to need to increase the stiffness on your spring and or adjust the nut for your preload. This way you maintain the same ride height, uh, the proper sag and preload. So just keep that in mind if you go with the lower progressive rate. So the last thing I want to talk about on your suspension system is your preload and your sag. So you can adjust your preload with this nut right here. If you turn it down and compress the spring, you're going to increase your preload and lessen your sag. If you loosen the nut up, you're going to lessen your preload and increase your sag. So according to Traxxas, guys, your preload should be one-third of the total suspension travel. Now, I would recommend only doing this after all of your other adjustments have been made. 
okay? Everything you do is going to change something with the preload. So the preload should be the very last thing that you, that you do. And like I said, Traxxas wants you to maintain one third of your total suspension travel. It's really up to you. It's, up, it's what you want. Obviously you don't want your car bottoming out with too less of a preload. And you don't want it bouncing all over the place with too much preload. You don't want to take this nut all the way down to the end of the shaft here where you have problems and you're, you're causing damage now. So keep that in mind. Uh, preload be the very last thing that you do. And that's kind of a final tuning adjustment for your ride height, your preload, and your side. Well guys, I think this video is getting a little bit longer than I actually wanted it to be. So I think I'm going to release this as a two-part series. And don't worry, I'll release them at exactly the same time so you can watch both of them back to back. So in this video, I hope that gave you a greater understanding of the entire suspension system, how it works, and how you need to adjust it based on the application and what you're trying to accomplish with your car. Um, as always, guys, it's been great. It's been a long time, but uh, thank you very much. I appreciate all the support and everything. And I want you guys to go out and, like I said, have fun, send me pictures, send me videos. If you have any questions or comments, please ask me. I promise I'll get back to you. It may not be as soon as possible, but I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the second part of this video, which we're gonna go ahead and rip the shocks out. We're going to rebuild them, refill them, and adjust them. So until next time, guys, have a great one, and I'll see you around. Peace out!